Hey everybody, welcome to part two of Core Fundamentals of Web Development. In this video, we're gonna walk through and just create our basic app skeleton. So the basic HTML structure for our application, and then we're gonna take a look at CSS variables and CSS resets. So let's go ahead and dive in. All right, so back in our index HTML here, I cleared out the kind of test stuff that I had in the previous one, and I've just got a basic app, app skeleton here. We've got our title as link saver, and then we've got links to our CSS and a reference to our, our JavaScript as well. So we've got all that ready to go and we can start uh, building out our skeleton. So the first thing we want to do is we want to uh, put a placeholder for our nav bar. So let's take a look at our finished product here. We've got a couple of different basic elements. We've got our, our header, our nav bar up here with the title and then an add icon. Then we've got the list of links, so this displays the links that we've already created. And then if we do a plus icon here, we get our drop down animated form that comes down from the top and then sits kind of in the middle. Now this form later on will be animated for the time being, it's gonna sit on top of the list of links and then we'll add the animation later on. So the first thing we wanna do in getting our skeleton ready, let's pop over to our uh, preview here is we're gonna do a nav element. So with Emmet, I can type nav and then tab. And so that's gonna be our nav bar in here. I'm just gonna do a, a placeholder, hello from nav bar. So this is obviously just gonna be a placeholder. And then next video, we're gonna come and actually build out the nav bar. So we've got our nav. Then we want a class or a div with a class of container. Now container, is uh, basically a class that will apply some padding or margin or whatever you want to call it on the on the left and right side of your page so your content will be centered in the page and it won't butt up all the way against the edges so notice here there's very little padding here for our container we're going to add a percentage of padding there so we've got a little more space to work with so if you guys remember our emit abbreviations if we're doing a div so div with a class of container div.container we can do that if I just do dot container, it's going to assume a div in Emmet. So I can just do dot container and then tab. Inside of our container is gonna be basically all of our main content for our application. So the two things we're gonna need, one is the add link panel. So it's gonna have a class of panel that we'll come back to in a second. And an ID, so I can just tack on here, ID of add link panel. And since it's a div, I don't need to specify the element. So I'll tab over. So there's our add link panel. That's gonna be basically the form that we worked with. And then we'll have an ID, a div with an, a div with an ID of links list. So this is obviously gonna be our, the container that holds the list or the links that we've already added to our list. So I'm gonna save this. We really shouldn't see anything other than hello from navbar. And now let's pop over to our CSS and we're gonna do a couple of pretty cool things here. The first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and declare some variables. Now variables are relatively new to CSS. One of the benefits previously to using uh, SAS or less, a pre-compiler for CSS, was its ability to use variables. So in CSS, in the last couple of years, we've added the functionality to uh, use variables as well. So I'm gonna copy in, uh, this is basically gonna be a section header, so my different CSS sections are gonna be uh, divided by this. And I'm going to start declaring my variables. Now to declare these, we need to do it on the root selector. So our selector is gonna be root. And then we can type in the name of our variable. So main accent is gonna be the first one. And it's gonna have a color of FC575E. And then our next one is gonna be a light accent color. And these are all gonna be colors. We could go really in depth and do this with font sizes or margins and paddings and all different kinds of stuff. We're not gonna do all of that. We're just gonna take advantage of variables to use di for different colors. So this one's gonna be F1, F1, F5. And I'm gonna fast forward through this so that you guys can don't have to wait and watch me struggle to type. All right, so we've got all four of our uh, variables. We've got our main accent, which is a reddish salmon kind of color, a light accent color, which is basically a white but a little bit off. Our dark accent color, a darker gray, and the main gray is gonna be a little bit lighter gray. Cool, so we've got those variables and I'll talk a little bit about why they're so important here in a second. But next, we're gonna talk about CSS resets. 
So CSS resets are basically a way for you to standardize all of the different CSS properties across different browsers. So if we look at our H1, I'm gonna come back over to our console and select our H1 tag. It's got certain properties down here. It's got display of block, it's got margin, it's got font weight, and these things are basically provided to us by the browser. Certain CSS properties are going to vary by browser, which is one of the tough things about trying to do really specific cross-browser applications to make them look exactly the same. So what people did was come up with resets, and this is the this is the idea that we're gonna go ahead and, and set all of these different properties to something that we know as a starting point. We're gonna create this starting point and then we can build on top of it. That way it's consistent for all these different browsers. So one of the common things that we do is set the margin and padding to zero on all elements. That way we know what we're working with. There's no deviation there. So I'm gonna select all elements here and then say margin zero and then padding zero as well. I'm gonna do a font family. Now this doesn't necessarily have to be a reset. This could be in a global section or wherever you want it, but it's what I'm doing. So I'm doing Arial Hel Helvetica sans serif. And the last thing I wanna do is box sizing of border box. Now this is actually really helpful because if you've never touched box sizing before, let's say we have, just as a test here, have a div with a class of box. And I'm gonna come over and style it here for testing. So we'll do a div with a class of box and we'll set a width of 50 pixels, a height of 50 pixels and a background color of red, the old red box. And this is not PC, but PX. So there's our red box. And when it actually gets rendered on the page, it is in fact, if we hover up over it, 50 by 50 pixels. So if we add a padding of 25 and go ahead, I'm gonna comment out this box sizing border box. So we've got our padding of 25 pixels here and then we haven't added the box sizing border box because I've commented it out. So now if I save this, we're gonna notice that this box is actually going to render at 100 by 100 because it's got padding left and right, 25 each, so it's 50 and then 50 top and bottom. So it's 100 pixels. And let's say we also added a border here. So let's say 10 pixels solid gray. Now our box is gonna grow even more so it's gonna be, I think, 120 by 120. So now we started with this 50 by 50 box and now it's 120 by 120. So let's say we wanted, regardless of our padding and our border, the height and width to be 50 by 50. Well, that's where border box, box sizing border box comes in, is it includes padding and border inside of uh, the height and width. So if I save this now, notice our box shrinks back to 50 by 50 and you can see the border and now the box inside just gets a little smaller. So this way I've defined 50 by 50 as the height and width and I know exactly what it's gonna be regardless of what padding and margin I, or excuse me, padding and border I add. So that was just a demo, so let's get that, get rid of that and we'll get rid of our definition or our inclusion of box here. And now in addition to our resets, that's basically gonna be our resets right there. We're gonna have a section for globals so these are just things that basically affect, they're not, too, they're not too specific. They can be applied to very generic elements. And I'm gonna do a couple things here. One is I'm gonna set the body to uh, a background color. And I'm gonna start by typing in uh, this light white color here. So you can see on the background here, it changes just slightly. You can see the difference white to this lightish, lightish, lightish gray here. Very subtle, but it's a little bit different. Um, and one of the things I wanna talk about now is going back to our variables. Because we defined a variable up here, we can now use it down here. And we use variables by doing var, var, and then in parentheses, we start to type our, our variable name. So light accent color. And save this, and we should see nothing's changed because it's pulling that same value just pulling it from a variable now. So this way we can reuse our variables in lots of different places, and then if we wanna change that color scheme for some reason, we just go and update the value of the variable, and we don't have to go and find everywhere it's used and do a global find and replace and all that kind of stuff. All right, so the next thing we wanna do is for an anchor tag, we're gonna set text decoration to none. And let's take a look at, I'm gonna comment this out first and we'll take a look at what an anchor tag looks like by default. Call it 
anchor tag, save that. So you'll notice that our anchor tags by default have this uh, underline. I don't really want that. So we are getting rid of that text decoration. We're setting it to none, which will get rid of that underline. And the last thing we want to do is we want to give a hover effect to an anchor tag. So A and then a hover selector. We want to set cursor to pointer. So anytime we hover over an anchor tag, we want to see that cursor right there. You guys can see that because we want to know that it's something that we can click on. It gives the user good feedback. This is common to do for anchor tags and buttons and just anything that you want to be able to click on to let the user know, hey, there's something here for you to click on. We've got our skeleton, we've got our CSS resets, we've got some global styles, and we've got some variables. So we're ready to move on to the next video, and I'll see you guys there.